Hey guys, so I'm tired as fuck, so I'm just gonna read some comments that I read somewhere that I thought were pretty interesting. Siglet. Siglet isn't the best lord in the series or unit in genealogy of the Holy War. Salas is better than him and gains class change bonuses, unlike his father. By class change bonuses, I am referring to performing a class change, where a unit pr receives bonuses to stats from their starting stats class to a higher caliber class. Siglet never received these bonuses and he starts at level 5, where he only gets 25 level ups without a class change bonus. Noish starts at level 3 and gains a class change bonus from a social knight to paladin, much like Alex starting at level 2. This is why Celis is better than Sigurd, due to starting out at level 1 and gaining class change bonuses when performing the event from Junior Lord to Lord Knight. This is why a unit like Ethlin is just as strong or in some instances stronger than Sigurd in stats other than HP and consistently power. Siglet is the unit's name. Starting stats aren't important. He doesn't have the best growth rates or best maximum stats. Starting stats are not better than growth rates. Growth rates are always more important than starting stats. I could do a video explaining this to you and others. Growths are better than bases. Class change bonuses make a difference in stats, which is why other units catch up to Siglet fast and in most cases are better than him. He doesn't gain bonuses since he can't class change. I think you may be, get, may be confused. I know I'm confused. Correct class change bonuses don't affect the maximum stats since they are static numerical values, but the increase in stats from a starting class to a newer class make a difference, which is why units like Siglet and Kwan aren't that good by comparison. <laughs> I did do my research and playtested several times to prove this point. His official name is Siglet, which you would know if you physically owned the game. His name was also Siglet in the first collectible card game, simply because that is his official name. Siglet may be, may, Sigurd may be the tr fan translation, but it is an inc inaccurate f translation of his official and accurate name is Siglet. Uh. Story and characters are subjective aspects, which is why there is no talk about those aspects in the video. What about the video was subjective? Thracia was purposely rushed to be the last game on the Famicom, and an excuse to work on other games with Sony. It's not intended to be a game players would like, but a game the creator would enjoy, and that's partially why Dark Dragon, Side Story, and Thracia are all poorly designed and mostly filler for the series. Games like Thracia and Side Story almost cancelled the series in 1992 and 1991-2000. There's no real value to these games, and only sold well due to living off of Mystery of the Emblem. That man, he means Kaga, is borderline homeless and lost all of his credibility in the game development industry. Considering the three games he did work on and own are all the bottom three games should explain that he wasn't good at developing games in general. The first game he made after being fired was decent, but that was probably his best game, which is better than Fire Emblem The Sword of Flame, but both games are simple and don't do anything constructive. They are passable, but nothing bad or good about them. Considering his first indie game made him lose credibility and he's making games on his own now, he's not doing so well. His first game caused his whole staff to leave. He's not doing so well. Indie games aren't successful in Japan, outside of Minecraft and home console versions of Shovel Knight. It's impossible to get a career or make a living as an indie developer in Japan. Siglet. He isn't that good of a lord archetype when other units are better from his game and other games. Seth also isn't that good of a unit in his game. Most pre-class change units aren't that good in general. Seth isn't even the best mentor archetype. Unfortunately, that isn't quite true, Ziggy. Units who are in the starting class overpower those in a pre-class ch change class. They have more level ups and catch up easily within a few level ups, including the class change bonuses when performing a class change. In fact, in every game besides Mystery of the Emblem, the XP scaling makes it so there's more effort put into raising pre-class change units rather than normal starting units. For example, in Lightstone of the Holy Demon, the unit Amelia gains 17 EXP when dealing 1 point of damage until she properly class changes to a real class, whether it be Social Knight or Armor Knight where she isn't affected by EXP scaling compared to normal units who start as a weaker class such as Ford, Kyle or Gilliam. While Seth only gains 3 EXP from defeating an enemy while Amelia gains 47 EXP from doing the same thing. Once again, at most pre-class change unit will have 19 level ups and don't usually have better growth rates compared to other units. Amelia has 47 level ups and 2 class change bonuses from a training class to normal one to an advanced class, in addition to her not being fully affected by scaling. 
With roughly the same growth rates, Amelia, like previously mentioned units, shall overpower Seth, even with Fortuccio's level ups consistently. The only game where they hasn't been true is Fire Emblem If, a game designed around this issue due to being the best designed game in the series and for the series. Adding the guaranteed variables and statistics pre-class change units are never superior than normal units and are practically non-viable. It's fundamental mathematics, problem solving, micromanaging and planning. Basic elements of the Fire Emblem series that can be learned by playing the games. Sill units and sill figures are subjective qualities and don't mean much. <laughs>